Good morning. morning. We want to welcome each one here this morning on a beautiful Sunday morning, especially those visiting with us. And it's good that we can come together as God's people to worship and to praise Him, to give Him thanks. Um, We're thankful with Martha DeVries for a great grandson, and we pray that God blesses him and his family. And we um, celebrate with Jean and Joanne, their anniversary today as they're sharing cake with us afterwards. And so it's good that we can come together as God's people and to encourage one another and to listen to his word. For our call to worship this morning, we turn in our bulletins and it comes to us from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And we begin our worship this morning by turning to number 52 in our hymn books, Blessed Be the Name. And our God greets us this morning in these words, Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, His only Son, through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our God, having greeted us, let's take a moment to greet one another.
light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord. I come to your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance by the blood I may enter your brightness search me try me consume all my darkness shine on me shine on me shine Jesus shine Fill this land with the Father's glory. Praise, Spirit, please. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood this nation with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill the land with the Father's glory. Place, Spirit, place. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. You have called us out of darkest night into your glorious light that we may sing the wonders of the risen Christ. May our every breath retell the grace that broke into our strife with boundless love and deepest joy within life. May the people praise you. Let the nations be glad. All your blessing comes that we may praise. May praise the name of Jesus. All the earth is yours and all within. Each harvest is your own. Christ known. May the seeds of mercy grow in us for those who have not heard. May songs of praise build lives of grace to spread your word. May the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad. All your blessing comes that we may praise, may praise the name of Jesus. This our holy privilege to declare your praises and your name to every nation 
and tribe and tongue your church proclaims. May the peoples praise you, let the nations be glad. All your blessing comes that we may praise, may praise the name of Jesus. Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, all creation, praise your glorious name, may the peoples let the nations be glad. All your blessing comes that we may praise, may praise the name of Jesus. May the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad. All your blessing comes that we may praise, may praise the name of Jesus. You may be seated, and thank you very much for leading us in song and praise to God this morning. For our guide for living this morning, we turn to our contemporary testimony, Our World Belongs to God, the section entitled, The Mission of God's People. Following the apostles, the church is sent, sent with the gospel of the kingdom, to make disciples of all nations, to feed the hungry, to proclaim the assurance that in the name of Christ there is forgiveness of sin and new life for all who repent and believe, to tell the news that our world belongs to God. We repent of leaving this work to a few. We pray for brothers and sisters who suffer for the faith, and we rejoice that the Spirit is waking us to see our mission in God's world. The rule of Jesus Christ covers the whole world. We serve Christ by thankfully receiving our life as a gift from His hand. Since God made us male and female in his image, one sex may not look down on the other, nor should we flaunt or exploit our sexuality. Our sexuality is disordered in our fallen world. Grief and loneliness are the result. We serve Christ as singles, whether for a time or a life. In marriage and family, we serve God by reflecting His covenant love in lifelong loyalty and by teaching His ways. In education, we seek to acknowledge the Lord by promoting schools and teaching in which the light of His Word shines in all learning. In our work, even in dull routine, we hear the call to serve our Lord.
Rest and leisure are gifts of God to relax us and to set us free to discover and to explore. Grateful for the advances in science and technology. Since God established the powers that rule, we are called to respect them unless they trample his word. Knowing that God's people live under many forms of government, We call on governments to do public justice, to protect the freedoms and rights of individuals, groups, and institutions, so that each may freely do the task God gives. Following the Prince of Peace, we are called to be peacemakers and promote harmony and order. And it's in him we take our confidence in living each day. And this time I would like to ask Mark um, to come up. Um, he is going to share with us a little bit some the discussion the council has had um, about denominations. So, Mark. Good morning. Um, we met with the consistency. Okay, good? Okay, we met as a consistory um, a couple weeks ago and just felt it was important to kind of bring the congregation up to speed on what's happening with the Reformed Church of America. Uh, we met with uh, the class's president, Cody Rank, and the senior pastor, Seth Sundstrom. Um, and they came and shared kind of what uh, our classes is looking at for going forward. Uh, the Reformed Church de denomination as a whole, has the majority of members and churches that hold to the traditional values of sexuality and the infallibility of scripture. But there are churches on the East Coast, uh, more and more churches on the East Coast that have a much more liberal view of those issues that we don't agree with. And so it's creating some division in the Reformed Church as to where we go going forward. Um, because of the structure of the organization, it takes a two thirds vote to overturn some of these policies that they're trying to push into our denomination. And so it's been difficult to discipline or control that. So um, going forward, we have three options right now as we see it as a consistory. We can stay where we are, do nothing, and hope things change. Hope that um, the East Coast becomes more in line with what we feel scripture, scriptural, proper scriptural interpretation is. Another option is to split the RCA into two to different denominations. We could do one more conservative, line up with our values, and then let the East Coast do as they may um, so that we're not aligned with that organization anymore. The third option, and the one that uh, our classes right now is, is suggesting that we look at, is an organization called ARC, which is Reformed Churches, um, an alliance of Reformed Churches. And their doctrine, their theology lines up exactly with where the RCA is right now. It's just a way for us to separate from the direction we feel the Reformed Church is going as a whole. And so there's a vote coming up in um, October by the uh, uh, General Senate 
we felt it was important to wait at least until October to decide what we felt we were going to do. Right now, 30 of the 34 churches in the Dakota classes, which we are in, are looking at aligning with ARC and, and leaving the Reformed Church. Um, we're not ready to take that step yet until we know a little bit more about what ARC represents and where uh, uh, the General Senate, how they vote. So but we felt it was important for you as a congregation to know this is something that's coming up, something we need to look at, we need to decide at some point. Uh, we recognize the value of the Reformed Church of America and the traditions and relationship we've had with that organization for a long time, but it may be time to look at another option if, if there's no solution where we're at. So. Thank you, Mark. Sharing that with us. So, and it's good to have a, a couple people who are involved with A Time to Revive, um, an organization that's working in our community with us this morning too. It's good that we can work as God's people um, to bring the good news of salvation of Jesus to this world. Shall we go to our God now in prayer? Our Father in heaven, we come unto you in this morning, and Lord, we thank you for this day that you have made, a day in which we can rejoice and be glad. Lord, we thank you that we can gather as your people in freedom to worship and praise you. And we ask, Lord, that your spirit rest upon us, that what we say and do may be a blessing to each one here, and that you might be honored and glorified. Lord, we thank you for this time of year, a time of year in which families can spend time together and can vacation together. And we ask, Lord, that you will be with those who are doing that wherever they are. And we ask, Lord, that you bless them and keep them safe. Lord, we thank you for the beauty of your creation. We thank you, Lord, that you've been with us through hot and dry times. You've provided rain. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to provide showers of rain, that crops may grow and produce a harvest, and that that harvest might be used for your purposes, to feed the people of this world, and that those who grow them too may be blessed. Lord, we pray that you will bless us in your church. We pray that you will bless your church wherever it gathers, that men and women, boys and girls, might be drawn to you, and that you might be honored and glorified. Lord, we, we thank you for the birth of Davis Jack DeHotley, and we ask, Lord, that you bless him. We thank you, Lord, that Martha can celebrate the birth of a great grandson. We thank you, too, for the gift of marriage for couples who have been married many years, and we ask, Lord, that you bless them. We pray that you especially be with Jean and Joanne, continue to give them strength. Lord, we thank you for the gift of little children. It's good to hear their voices. And we thank you, Lord, that we can take delight in teaching children the good news of Jesus Christ. And we ask that you'll be with us now as we worship. We ask that you'll be with us in the week that lies ahead, that you will guide our thoughts and direct us in the ways that we should go. We ask that you'll be with this church. We ask that you'll be with the RCA, the denomination, we ask that you will bless by your spirit to the paths that you would have us to go, whatever that may be. And Lord, we pray that you will bless the work of your people wherever they gather. We thank you, Lord, for the group of time to revive, and we pray that that may spark a vigor for the gospel, and that people who have not taken time to consider you might be drawn to you and that you might be praised through us, your people. We ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. This time we ask the children to come forward for our children's message.
It's good to see you guys here. It's always good to see you. Um, you enjoying your summer yet? You are. Um, do any of you ever have to help your mom and dad at all with any yard work? Ever have to help mow lawn or help in the garden? Um, Levi, do, if your mom and dad tell you to mow the lawn, how much of the lawn do you mow? Everything. Boy, you're a good kid. You don't just mow a section and then say, I mowed the lawn. No. Um, that's easy for us to do. If mom says, did you mow the lawn, Levi? Yeah, I mowed. But you don't mow it all. That, that would be the easy way out. And it's good she trained you to mow the whole thing. And if you go and would plant seeds in the garden, you know, we don't take all... if. Our mom and dad would give us seeds to plant. We wouldn't take them and put them all on one pile and think, boy, this is easier. Um, we only have to take care of this much. We want the whole garden planted. Farmers don't go and plant in their fields and plant all the seeds in just a little area. They spread it out to get the, the best return for the seed. And that's the way God is with us too. He wants us to bless his whole creation and be a blessing to all the people we come in contact with. And sometimes it's easy to stay and say, this is my best friend. I want to do everything with them and not really associate with anybody else. And it's important that we use how God has blessed us to be a blessing to many people. And so I brought you something this morning. And it's a, it's a big bag of different Hershey's candy bars. And if I were to give the whole bag to Levi, he would really be blessed, probably. Um, and the rest of you wouldn't. So it's good that I share it with all of you. <laughs> and I'd like you to um, each take a handful of them, if you would. There's different kinds. There, now some of you got a few, some of you got considerably more, but now the challenge is, is I want you to give all but one away to somebody in church. And so really, I think the whole church should be blessed with getting a candy bar. And the more God gives to us, the more we should share with others. And so thanks for coming up this morning. And Levi, you just took on yourself a good task. And so... <laughs> Some of you may end up with more than one, and some kids may end up with more than one. But it's good to spread the wealth. For <laughs> it's hard to find somebody that don't have one, isn't it? And that's good. And that's the way it should be with us, too, sharing the gospel. It should be hard to find somebody who hasn't heard it. So. For our scripture reading this morning, we turn to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 11, and we'll read the first nine verses. But before we start reading, I, I got just a trivia question. We um, sometimes play trivia um, who was, we've been talking about Noah, who was the oldest of Noah's sons? Anybody know? 
You are right, Shem is mentioned first. Is Shem the oldest? Japheth is the oldest, yes. Who's second? Shem is second, and then Ham is the youngest. And if we go to God's Word and study that, we find that. But sometimes it's easy to, they're listed Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So it's easy to just assume Shem was the oldest. But it's good for us to study God's Word and look at it closely. And sometimes some things are brought out to us that otherwise we wouldn't find. And so we turn now to Genesis chapter 11, and we'll read the first nine verses. Now the whole world had one language and common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used bricks instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that they may make an so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, If as one people, speaking the same language, they've begun to do this thing, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over the, all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Then we turn also to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 17, and we'll read the first 13 verses. Matthew chapter 17, beginning at verse 1. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son, whom, I'm lo whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, Why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, To be sure Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him but have done to him everything they wished, in the same way the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. This is the word of the Lord, and may God add his blessing to it. This past week I had the privilege of going with many of my family, brothers and sisters, to... Irene, South Dakota, just outside of Irene, to a resort there called the um, Broom Tree Youth and Family Camp. And as you drive into the camp, it has a big sign on it that says, Habitat for Christ. And it's a, it was a wonderful place for us to go. 
There's a large lodge there where we could have all our meals together, over a hundred of us gathered there. And we could meet in, we had different cabins. Uh, one blessing about it, it was all air conditioned. And so we enjoyed a time together. There's a swimming pool there where the kids could swim. And some brought beanbag boards. And I had a brother-in-law who brought an archery. And um, the kids enjoyed playing together. And we played together. We ate and we fellowshiped, caught up on each other's lives. We get together every three years. And we worship together. And it's good to do those things. It was good to get together with some that we haven't seen for a few years, especially considering last year. It was supposed to be held last year. But it was good to be there. But it's good to come together as God's people. But it was good to go back to our own homes too. You stand, spend a few days together, and as one person once said to me, it's good to come together, and it's kind of sweet when you all come together. But if you stay together too long, you start to stink a little. Um, and it's good to go back to our own homes. If we had had to live there for a whole month, we probably wouldn't have appreciated each other quite as much after the end of the month. And we go back to our homes spread out over several different states. And it's important to remember. It's important to remember that God brings us to where we are in life. Sometimes we think we do it on our own, but it's God who brings us to where we're at. And as we look at this passage from Genesis chapter 11, it's important to put it in the right context. If we go back to chapter 9, verse 1, after Noah and his family came off the ark, God says to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the whole earth. That's what God told them to do. And then if we go to chapter 10, if you look at chapter 10, it may look like there's just a whole slug of names there. And there is. There's a whole slug of names in chapter 10 of Genesis. But if we, we look at verse Five. it talks about the Japhethites and it says from these the maritime peoples spread out into their territories by their clans within their territories each with its own language and it's thought that the Japhethites probably became the Europeans and probably our descendants um, and then it goes on to verse 20 and it talks about the Hamites. And it says these are the sons of Ham by their clans and languages in their territories and nations. And um, it's thought that the Hamites um, inhabited Africa and perhaps Asia. And then it goes on to the Semites. Um, in verse 31... And it says, these are the sons of Shem by their clans, languages, in their territories, and nations. And it's thought that these were the um, ancestors of the Israelites and the Arab people. And it goes on to verse 32, and it says, These are the clans of Noah's sons, according to their lines of descent within their nations. From these the nations spread out over the earth after the flood. So it appears that the people listened to God's command. That they spread out over the whole world and that they were fruitful and increased in number. But then it goes into chapter 11. And why does God do that? It appears that this all happened just right. And then it says, the people all gathered together on one spot. They gathered together on one spot in the plain of Shinar, and it says they began building. They built four things. It says they began to build a city. A city where they could all stay together. And they built a tower, a tower that reached to the heavens so they could build a name for themselves and security. 
that they would not be scattered out over the whole world. They were really seeking for themselves their own way, for their own glory, and for their own comfort. And we look at us as people, and it's easy to do that ourselves, is it not? It's easy to live our lives for our enjoyment, for our comfort, for our reputations. And we forget we were placed here by God to bring Him glory, to reflect that glory, and to give Him praise. And the serpent, as it spoke to Adam and Eve, speaks to the people at the Tower of Babel. And it speaks to us and says, you'll be like God. You can do it your way. There's even songs that say that. I did it my way. And people say it with pride. But we were made for God's glory and God's praise. And we find our comfort, our security in trusting and obeying Him. Then it says in verse 5, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower. Moses who wrote this, must have almost had a sense of humor. The people thought they were building a tower that reached to the heavens, but it appears that God can't hardly even see it from up there. So God has to come down and look at their tower, look at their city, and inspect it. And sometimes we think we're doing a lot here. We're accomplishing a lot. And it's very little in the eyes of God. But it says God comes down and He checks it out just as the Lord came. The Lord came to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The Lord also came to check out Sodom and Gomorrah. And we wonder what the Lord sees when He comes and checks out the world in which we live in. He came and evaluated it. And He evaluates us and He evaluated the situation. He said, this isn't what I wanted. I didn't want you all on one pile, living for yourselves. And so, he says, as he does in Genesis, he says, let us. Let us confuse their language. God is triune. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they come together as one God. And confused the people's language. The city was called Babel after that. Because they couldn't understand it. It was a city of confusion. The word Babel is interpreted throughout the Bible 200 times in the Old Testament. The same word as Babylon. And it's also used in Revelation. The city of the beast. And when we live for ourselves, we become people as enemies of God. And God wants to be our friend. He wants us to be His children in fellowship with Him. And so He dispersed them to accomplish His purposes. John Piper says, God is more concerned with the dangers of uniformity and conformity than he is of the challenges of diversity. See, he dispersed them through the whole world and gave them many languages to speak. Currently, there's over 7,000 different languages in our world. It's a lot of languages. I only know one. <laughs> but it says, of those 7,000 languages, 23 of them make up over half of the people. And so there's a lot of languages with not many people. And for people to reach the gospel to those people, it's a challenge to learn those languages, to put it into writing. And there's many people who've done a lot of work in bringing the good news of salvation to people who otherwise wouldn't be able to hear. People have gone out of their comfort zones to live in areas that are much different than ours. I talked with a, a missionary family who came from 
southwest Minnesota, and they, they went to Africa. And they were used to the comforts of the United States, and they went to, to live with the Mali people and to share the gospel with them. And they had grown up on a dairy farm in, in Minnesota, and the Mali like their dairy cattle. And they travel all over, following their cattle wherever they go and milking them. They don't have refrigeration. And he said they would come and give you a gift of a bowl of warm milk. And they, had to, they graciously accepted it. And they lived that style of life. And the Mali people thought they'll be here a little bit and they'll leave. They won't stay with us. But they said after they stayed there 10 years and had less than a handful of conversions, the Mali people started to see that they were there to stay. They were there to bring the good news of salvation to them. And then all of a sudden, many people turned to Jesus. And sometimes God takes us out of our comfort zones and He has us work in areas where we wouldn't choose to go. I remember hearing another pastor say when he graduated from seminary, he said, Lord, I'll go wherever you want me to go. Just don't send me to Africa. Guess where God sent him? God sent him to Africa for a few years. And sometimes God sends us to people we would just as soon not associate with. And yet, we're all people made in God's image. And everybody needs to hear the good news of salvation. But we like to stay in our comfort zone, do we not? And as we look at this passage in Matthew 17, it says Jesus with a few of his disciples gathered on a mountain. And suddenly a light came over them and Jesus was transformed before them and he glowed before them. And then Moses and Elijah show up as well. And it had to seem like they were in heaven. And Peter says, this is good. <laughs> this is great. Jesus, if you want, let me make three shelters. One for you, one for Elijah, one for Moses. But before the words even got out of his mouth, God interrupts him. There's a bright cloud. And God speaks from heaven and he says, This is my son. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And sometimes God interrupts our thoughts too, does he not? We think we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And God must almost be laughing from heaven. You're not going to do that. You're not going to come close to doing that. This is what I want you to do. And I might have things happen in your life that bring you to that point. And we do well to seek God first, to seek Him where we should go. See, Peter wasn't going to stay on that mountaintop. He would come down with other disciples and they would see Jesus die, but be raised again. And then Jesus would send them out into the world to go and make disciples of all nations. And they would each lay down their lives as well for the good news of Jesus Christ. And Jesus takes us people. And it's great to gather here together, to sing together, to be encouraged. But we each go back to our own homes. We each go back to our own jobs. And we take with us the good news of Jesus. Because people need to hear it. People need to see Jesus living in us. It says, Peter and the disciples, they fell on the ground as dead when God spoke to them. And when they looked up, they saw only Jesus. May we look and see Jesus. When He speaks to us, it may be through a drought, it may be through a flood, it may be through a sickness, it may be through the death of a loved one. And through all those things, may we see Jesus. 
And may we hear Him speak to us in new ways. When we go on vacation, it's good It's good to go to different places. It's good to have a, a couple with us this morning who are visiting perhaps in a church that's different than what you're used to. And sometimes it's good to go and worship in different churches, different denominations. And they can do things that are different than we do. do. And sometimes it can make us feel a little uncomfortable, can it? And yet, God is working in those places as well. And God works in our lives. Sometimes the most when things get uncomfortable. When we wonder, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my family? What's going to happen to my life? And we remember, Jesus came. Jesus came to give us abundant lives. And we can take joy in knowing that no matter where we go in life, He goes with us. And we can share Jesus sometimes with people we never would just because they inquire of us. Where do you come from? What do you do? And we can share with them our occupations. We can share with them our families. But most important, our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. See, our only comfort in life and in death is not that we're all gathered here today. This is great, but our only comfort in life and in death is we're not our own. We belong body and soul in life and in death to our faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. And He's the one who goes with us wherever He leads us. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we come unto you in this morning. And we thank you, Lord, that you are God, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who gives us our lives and gives them meaning in living. Lord, we confess we often like to do things our way rather than seek your way. But we thank you, Lord, that you loved us despite our sins, that you left the comfort of heaven to come down and to become one of us and to give your life so that whoever believes in you may have eternal life. Lord, we pray that you might be praised in us and that people might be drawn to see you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now shall we stand and profess what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and while our offerings are being received, we'll sing number 143, This is My Father's World.
and we come unto you in this morning and we thank you. We thank you for having blessed us so richly, for giving us far more than we need or deserve. Lord, help us to remember that all that we have is a gift from you entrusted to our care for a little while. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give back a portion of what you've blessed us with. And we ask that you will multiply it, that you will use it for the furtherance of your kingdom, that you will use your church here on earth to bring the good news of salvation to men and women, boys and girls, and that your name may be praised, that we might be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we were singing, I was reminded of my high school days, used to sing in a choir, and one time I got to go sing with a choir of over a thousand people. And you couldn't hear yourself sing. Um, And people singing all different parts. And as we sing here, praise God from whom all blessings flow, we wonder how many languages that's sung in throughout the world. And that has to be a great sound for our God to hear. For our benediction this morning we turn to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, beginning at verse 14, where Paul writes, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Amen. For our closing song, we'll sing together number 667, Lord Speak to Me.